For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. The memories that we hold of our lives can be like the thread of an intricately crafted tapestry. While it may be easy to follow a thread we remember, we're never truly capable of taking a step back to look at ourselves as a complete whole, a cohesive picture of what someone else sees. When we're gone, all we can be are the memories that someone else holds of us. Memories hold a strong narrative and reflective power in what remains of Edith Finch, and just as importantly are the ways that it contemplates death, as well as its importance. Few games have such a humbling, quieting power to be so achingly sad, but still hopeful, leaving a presence of deeply silencing contemplation on the fleeting nature of life and how we search for meaning in our own through others' deaths. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. In What Remains of Edith Finch, you play as Edith, who is returning to her empty childhood home after a long absence. She, as we find out, is the last of a long line of Finches. For over a century, the family has been believed to be cursed, as every member has strangely met their demise in some way or another. Edith is back home to put the pieces of the family together, and to acquire the knowledge of who these people were as she slowly unlocks the doors of the house she thought she knew so well. Upon first entering the house, after venturing slowly through the silent wooded front path, listening to the sounds of the quiet and birds, climbing the steps to the towering behemoth that was home to the Finches for so long, Edith recounts to us her memories of the house, and what remains of Edith Finch becomes something of a ghost story. There are no specters or apparitions to be found, but the home is haunted by memories. We float through it as a silent spectator, listening to Edith's recollections, and taking in the small details that give the house a life of its own. It's melancholic to walk through every bit of the home, as tiny bits of detail strewn about overwhelm every nook and cranny, from books about cooking to pictures hung on the wall overlooking the beautiful waves and sky of Orcas Island. In a way, just walking around the house itself feels like something of a memory. Having grown up in the area myself, it feels like stepping into a time of a place I maybe once knew. Looking at remnants of a family we try to remember by piecing together their lives through their possessions. Even before we are witness to any knowledge of the Finch family, there's a deeply personal and intimate feeling to the way the setting draws you in. And once you're inside, it doesn't let go. Edie told me once that every Finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. The Finch home expands like a towering puzzle box. Rooms that have been closed off for years are connected through a myriad of secret passages, each leading to a room that once belonged to every member of the Finch household. The rooms are each, in some way, a mausoleum, representing one who has died, all with interesting visual histories as we read final words from them or the family members and people that they were closest to. At these points, as Edith reads through collections of their memorabilia, we travel to the moments that these members passed away, seeing through their eyes. These short vignettes all represent the deceased through unique levels embodying them, and in a beautiful way, giving them life. While they can be harrowingly sad, knowing that each will end with the demise of a character, there's also a beauty to them, giving us a perspective of each and every member of the family in their last moments, always through thought-provoking words of those who are reflecting on them. You'll become several animals in one through the imagination of a young girl, and multitask a member of the family daydreaming while at a cannery in another. But they remain grounded, still reflections of these people and the lives they lived, as well as how the deaths of those around them affected them. The family is all connected, and it's quieting to see how death has impacted each person and the family as a whole. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. There is an immaculate attention to detail in what remains of Edith Finch not just in the ways that the world of the house comes alive as we walk the halls, but in how we see the lives of the family intersect. Like a tapestry, we're able to take a step back and see the towering Finch home as something more, a collection of impacting stories on life and death, and a picture of what it all means to different people. As the credits roll, you're left to contemplate on the people. What remains of Edith Finch on the outside seems to be a story about death, 
about those who lost their lives to tragedy and disaster. But it's also more than that. It's a meditation on something much deeper. Death is something that will come for all of us, but it is still an event that means something different regardless of who you talk to. Edith Finch finds a beautiful line in reflecting on the end, while remembering that purpose and meaning shouldn't solely come from it. If you spend too much time making your story about how it's going to end, you may miss what you already mean to those around you, who sit on the outside, looking at that tapestry we'll never see ourselves. Taking full advantage of its medium, What Remains of Edith Finch is an achingly beautiful, deeply saddening, and reverently hopeful game that will make you cry, reflect, and will leave you deeply emotionally quieted, a feat that few other games can accomplish.